In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the 555 timer integrated circuit to create a low frequency pulse generator circuit. This circuit can be used to create square waves, and you can even adjust the duty cycle of those waves, which we'll talk about later in this video. Now, if you were to take the 555 timer and lay it out on the board with the semicircle facing up, pins one through four will be on the left side. So these include the ground and the trigger pins, and also the output and the reset pins. Pins five through eight are on the right side. Pin number five, that's the control voltage pin, and pin eight, you would connect that to the positive voltage supply. By the way, feel free to check out the links in the description section below, as I'll be posting other videos related to the 555 timer. So let's begin. Here is the circuitry that you need in order to create the low frequency pulse generator circuit. You just need the 555 timer, two resistors, a capacitor, and a voltage source. Somewhere between five and 15 volts will do. Now, the waveform that will be generated from the output is a rectangular waveform. It looks something like this. This is known as the pulse width of the waveform. This is the space width. And the sum of the pulse width and the space width, that is known as the cycle time. The frequency is the reciprocal of the cycle time. Now, the frequency depends on R1, R2, and C1. As you increase the value of R1 in a circuit, the frequency decreases. And as you increase the capacitance of C1 in a circuit, the frequency decreases as well. So by adjusting R2, I mean R1 and C1, and even R2 as well, you can adjust the frequency of the circuit. Now there is a formula that can help us to calculate the frequency generated by the 555 timer circuit in this specific example. The frequency is equal to 1.44 divided by the sum of R1 plus 2 times R2 times C1. So that's the formula you need in order to calculate the frequency. Now let me just uh, get rid of this. Now to calculate the pulse width, well, once you have the frequency, the next best thing to calculate is the cycle time. It's one divided by the frequency. The pulse width, you can calculate it using this formula. It's 0 0.693 times R1 plus R2 times C1. Now to calculate the space width, keep in mind the cycle time is the sum of the pulse width and the space width. So the space width is the cycle time minus the pulse width. Now the next thing that we need to be able to calculate is the duty cycle. The duty cycle is equal to the pulse width divided by the cycle time times 100%. It's also equal to, there's another formula that you can get it. I'm going to write DC for duty cycle. It's equal to R1 plus R2 divided by R1 plus 2 times R2 times 100%. Now let's work on an example problem. So let's say that R1 is 100 kilo ohms. R2, we're going to make it 200 kilo ohms. And let's say that C1 is a 1 microfarad capacitor. Calculate the frequency the cycle time, draw the waveform as well, and calculate the pulse width, the space width, and the duty cycle. Feel free to pause the video and work on uh, that example. So let's begin by calculating the frequency. It's going to be 1.44 divided by R1. So R1 is 100K plus 2 times R2. So 100K plus 2 times 200K, that's 100 plus 400K which is 500K. So 
R1 plus 2R2 is 500 kilo ohms, or 500 times 10 to the 3 ohms. And then C1 is 1 microfarad, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. So let's plug that into the calculator. So the frequency that I got is 2.88 hertz. Now to calculate the cycle time, let me just write this here. To calculate the cycle time, all we need to do is take the reciprocal of the frequency. So it's going to be 1 over, 1 over 2.88. So that's 0 0.3472 seconds. If we multiply that by 1,000, we can get the cycle time in milliseconds. So it's 347.2 milliseconds. So now that we know the cycle time, before we draw the waveform, let's calculate the pulse width. But before we do that, let's uh, clear away what we have here. So the pulse width is going to be 0.693, and then it's R1 plus R2 times C1. So let's go ahead and plug in everything into that formula. So it's 0.693. R1 is 100K plus R2 200K, so that's 300K. 300 kilo ohms or 300 times 10 to the 3 ohms. And then C1 is 1 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. So we have 300,000 times 1 times 10 to the minus 6 times 0.693. So the pulse width is 0 0.2079 seconds. Multiplying that by 1,000, we get a pulse width of 207.9 milliseconds. So now that we know the pulse width, we can calculate the space width. So the space width is going to be the cycle time minus the pulse width. So that's going to be 347.2 milliseconds minus 207.9 milliseconds. So the space width is 139.3 milliseconds. So now let's see if we can draw the appropriate waveform. So the output is going to be on for a longer time than the input. So this is my approximation. So this is when the output is on, and this is when it's off. Notice the time is different. If we call this T1, the time that's associated with when the circuit is on, that's the pulse width, that's approximately 208 milliseconds. And T2, when it's off, that's the space width, that's approximately 139 milliseconds. Now, let's calculate the duty cycle. The duty cycle tells us how long the output is on relative to the total cycle time. So it's going to be the pulse width divided by the cycle time. We have a pulse width of 207.9 milliseconds, and the cycle time is 347.2 milliseconds. And we're going to multiply this by 100%. So right now, we have a duty cycle of 
So we're going to say approximately 60%. So what does that mean? That means that the output is in the on state approximately 60% of the time. And it's in the off state approximately 40% of the time. So by adjusting the duty cycle of the waveform, you could determine how long the timer is on and how long it's off, meaning the, the output signal when you have a high voltage compared to when you have a low voltage. Now let's talk about the other way of calculating the duty cycle because it helps us to see how R1 and R2 affects the duty cycle so that when you design a circuit you can create the desired duty cycle that you want. So you need to be familiar with both equations. So the duty cycle is R1 plus R2 divided by R1 plus 2R2 times 100%. So in this example, R1 is 100K. R2 is 200K over 100K plus 2 times 200K, which is 400K. So we have 300K on top. 500k on the bottom and 3 over 5 is 0.6 times 100% that gives us a duty cycle of 60% so you can use either one of the two formulas to calculate the duty cycle now sometimes you may want to design a specific type of rectangular wave you may want a wave where the pulse is on most of the time, but it's off for a very brief time. You may want a wave that looks like this. And other times, you want a nice even square wave. That is, you want the duty cycle to be approximately 50%, where it's on half of the time and it's off half of the time. So how can you adjust the values of R1 and R2 to get these two different types of rectangular waves? Well, let's talk about the first one. Let's say if you want a duty cycle that's close to 100%, what can you do? In this case, you want R1 to be very high, let's say 1 mega ohm, and R2 to be very low. In this case, 1 kilo ohm. We don't want too much current flowing through the 555 timer. We don't want to create any heating effects to damage it. So 1 kilo ohm is a, a decent value. So calculating the duty cycle, it's going to be R1 which is 1 times 10 to the 6, plus R2, which is 1,000, divided by R1, 1 times 10 to the 6, plus 2 times R2, so that's 2,000, times 100%. If you plug this in, you'll get a duty cycle of approximately 99.9%. .9%. So it's going to be on most of the time, but it's going to be off for a very brief time. So you'll get a wave that looks something like this. It's not drawn to scale. So that's how you could get a duty cycle of approximately 100%. Choose a very large R1 value and a very small R2 value. Now the reverse is true if we want to get a duty cycle of approximately 50%. In this case, we want to choose a very small R1 value. I'm going to use 10 kilo ohms and a very large R2 value. In this case, 1 mega ohm. So the duty cycle is going to be R1, so that's 10,000, or 10 times 10 to the 3, plus R2, that's 1 times 10 to the 6, divided by R1, and then plus 2 times R2, so 2 times 10 to the 6. The idea is that 1 million is a lot larger than 1,000. So 1 million plus, I mean this is 10,000, 1 million plus 10,000 is 1.01 million. So that's approximately 1 million. 10,000 plus 2 million is still approximately 2 million. So 1 over 2, you get a duty cycle of approximately 50%. If you plug in the exact numbers, it's going to be about 50.2%. So for all practical purposes, you have, for the most part, a square wave where it's on half of the time and off half of the time. So I decided to build the 
5 for 5 timer a pulse generated circuit. I used a capacitance of 1 nanofarad. R2 was set to 10 kilo ohms, and R1 was set to 96 kilo ohms using a potential meter. And this is the waveform that I got with my uh, digital oscilloscope. It's uh, one of those handheld oscilloscopes. And you can see the cycle time is approximately 100 microseconds. Each box on a horizontal axis is 20 microseconds. So this is 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 microseconds. The frequency was 10 kilohertz. If you take 1 divided by 100 microseconds or 1 divided by 100 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds, you'll get 10,000 hertz or 10 kilohertz. So that is the measured frequency. The theoretical frequency, as provided by the formula, should be 12.4 kilohertz. But in this circuit, I use a breadboard and I have a lot of wires which may introduce some inductance to the circuit. So therefore, I can see why that the measured frequency is a little bit off from the theoretical frequency. And nothing is perfect, so there's going to be some deviation with the circuit that you're using. But nevertheless, 10 kilohertz is not too far from 12.4 kilohertz. The duty cycle for this is 91%. So that means that 91% of the time, the output is in the on state. And only about 9% of the time, the output is in the off state. And so by adjusting your R1 and R2 values, you can determine how long the output will be in the on state and how long it's going to be in the off state. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to watch a demonstration. In this demonstration, R1 is set to 1 mega ohm. R2 is set to 2 mega ohms. And the capacitance is set to 1 microfarad. The calculated frequency is 0.288 hertz, which means that the cycle time is approximately 3.5 seconds. The duty cycle is going to be 60%. So 60% of the time it's on, 40% of the time it's off. So what I've done is I connected the 555 timer to an LED. And as you watch this demonstration, note how the LED stays on longer in the on state and compared to the off state. So as was evident in that demonstration, we saw that the cycle time was approximately three and a half seconds. That is the time from when the LED is off until it is off again, or when it started on until it turned on again. And we also saw that the LED was in the on state for a longer period of time than it was in the off state. And so by adjusting the values of R1 and R2, you can control the duty cycle of the 555 timer pulse generator circuit. Now let's work on an example problem. What we want to do is we want to design a 555 timer pulse generator circuit with a duty cycle of approximately 50% and we want a frequency of 60 Hertz. Now we're going to set R1 to 1 kilo ohm. What values should we choose for R2 and C1? What would you say? Well, in order to get a duty cycle of 50%, we know that we want to choose a large R2 value and a small R1 value. So you want R2 to be at least 100 times greater than R1 if you want to get a duty cycle of approximately 50%. It could be 1,000 times greater, which is great, but at least 100 times greater, you know, just to make sure the on and off states are approximately equal. So 100 times a 1 kilo ohm resistor is 100 kilo ohms. So R2, we want it to be somewhere between 100 kilo ohms and 1 mega ohm. And that'll give us a duty cycle close to 50%. So we don't have the exact value of R2, but at least we have a ballpark figure right now. Now what we're going to do is we need to determine C1 to get a frequency of 60 hertz. 
Now we know the frequency is equal to 1.44 times R1 plus 2R2 times C1. Now note that R2 is significantly larger than R1. When that happens, R2 plus R1 is going to be approximately equal to R2. For instance, a million plus a thousand is still approximately a million. A million one thousand is about a million. Or let's say if you have a hundred thousand plus one thousand, that's a hundred and one thousand, which is pretty close to a hundred thousand. So because R2 is significantly larger than R1, this holds true. So if that's the case, 2R2 plus R1 will be approximately equal to 2R2. So thus, we could simplify the frequency equation. We could say that it's approximately 1.44 R1 over 2R2 times C1. Because R1 is so small, we can neglect it in the equation. It's negligible. So this is going to simplify the math for us. Now, what we need to do is we need to rearrange the equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace C1 and F. You can accomplish that by multiplying both sides by 1 over F and C1. Or just C1 over F. So these will cancel, those will cancel. And we get C1 is approximately 1.44 over 2F R2. So we want a frequency of 60 hertz. And let's go with 100 kilo ohms. So 100 times 10 to the 3. So let's go ahead and plug that in and see what answer we're going to get. So I got 1.2 times 10 to the minus 7 farads. If you divide that by 1, 1 times 10 to the minus 6, this will equal 0.12 microfarads. Now, 0.12 microfarads is not a common value of capacitance. 0.1 microfarad is. So what we're going to do is we're going to recalculate R2. Even though we chose a 100 kilo ohm value, we're going to adjust it. So rearranging the equation, we can swap C1 and R2. So we can say that R2 is approximately 1.44 over 2 times 60 times C1, which we're going to use 0.1 microfarads instead of 0.12, because that's a common value. You can purchase that online. It's going to be hard to find a 0.12 microfarad capacitor. So plugging this in, we get an R2 value of 100 20 kilo ohms. Now we can easily get this resistance. All we need to do is add three resistors in series. The first one is being, or it will be a 100 kilo ohm resistor, and the other two could be two 10 kilo ohm resistor. So we can easily get this value. So if we want a duty cycle of 50% and a frequency of 60 hertz, we need a resistance of 120 kilo ohms for R2 and a C1 value of 0.1 microfarads. So now you know how you can design a 555 timer pulse generator circuit with a duty cycle of 50% and of a certain frequency. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And for those of you who like it, don't forget to comment, like, or subscribe to this channel.